Kia ora, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Um, that was such a nice introduction. Um, I wanted to start um, today with something that we never have time for, because um, we're too busy. But I want to teach you or guide you in a way that I think these things need to be simplified and taking care of your well-being can be overwhelming because who's got enough hours on the day to do all the things that we're meant to do? It's quite a lot of them um, to keep yourself sane. But I just want to deliver a really gentle practice that you can repeat on your own. Um, so without more talking, um, I'm going to invite you to get really comfortable on your seat. So. Drop any expectations to begin with. If you do this often, we'll talk about it in a moment. But um, just be open to the experience and be open to um, maybe the opportunity to learn something new that you can add to your bucket, um, to your toolbox. Um, I'm going to invite you to, if you're feeling comfortable and safe, you're going to close your eyes. And notice the self-talk. Maybe you have an agenda, expectation, curiosity. And just pay attention to where your focus is right now. Don't choose your focus, but notice what you're focusing on. Sounds, thoughts, sensations, my voice. And then I'm going to invite you to feel your body on the chair, your feet touching the ground. Become aware of your shoulders and just notice them. So without any judgment, we bring no agenda here. We're not going to bring anything to, um, there's no schedule to go through. Just to pay attention to our physical being. Notice your stomach. Notice what the belly is doing. We often tense that belly. And I can invite you now to relax because this is a safe environment. No need to be on guard. And that's how we teach our belly that everything is okay. We gotta connect. I'm gonna invite you now to become aware of your breath. And notice when I said that you change your breath. Notice the way the breath moves through your body. If your chest rises or if your belly rises, Notice if you're using mouth or nostrils. But go back to notice your mind. Where is your mind? Bring it back. Bring it back to sensations in the body. Even your fingertips. Even your tongue. What are they up to? We together want to take a deep breath in. Deep breath out. And I'm going to invite you to set an intention. We're very lucky it's the start of the month. So maybe you want to set an intention for the practice or the experience today or the rest of your week. Make it something achievable, something for your well-being. Maybe it's reducing the amount of coffee. Maybe it's drinking more water. If you never run, maybe don't think about signing up for a marathon. Let's be more accessible about our goals, little ones. And maybe make a commitment for the rest of the day to check in within your breath, within your body. What else could you relax right now? You're held by the chair, so there are parts of our body that don't need to be so active. And notice how you feel. And let our mind be open to receive something new, something different from every speaker. We're all here because we want to share and improve the way we live in the community. So we'll take one more breath in. Let it go. And feel free to gently open your eyes. Just notice how you feel. You all look like you had a nap. So thank you for joining me with that. Um, it is an honor to be here because uh, I think I've been on both sides. Um, 
and I think talking about uh, emotional health, it's one of my passions at the moment. I believe mental health should be called emotional health. Um, it is a regulation of our emotions, emotional intelligence. How do we build that? How do we cultivate that? There are only a few emotions that we know, anger, sadness, and joy. And we aim to be happy, you know? We, we aim to, um, happiness is a choice. And I question that quote, because if you're going through a bad experience, you're, I don't think you should be happy. So it's how are we allowing a space for our emotions? So we're all gonna go through up and downs in life. That's, let's be honest, that's life. It's a heartbeat, I always use that reference. So if you think your heartbeat goes up and down, when it goes flat, it means that we're not here anymore. So life goes up and down, up and down, and it's a matter of how do we ride the wave. Um, I feel emotional intelligence comes from experience as well, but also uh, awareness. Awareness is the first step. So when you're triggered, you know, does anyone not understand what a trigger is? And please be really open to exchange. I don't like to be, if you don't, well, if, just in case, a trigger is something that makes you feel threatened, something that triggers, uh, it reminds you of something bad. And these triggers are often created in our body. So you might have healed from a trauma. I was actually realizing sitting there that I'm not fully healed from the earthquakes because I feel a bit overwhelmed to have this view. And it reminds me, I was two streets down this cathedral. I lived in town, I would walk in town every night and I was just sitting there taking my jacket off and I looked at the image and I was like, my body responded, that's trauma. And we all go through trauma. So this is about our workplace. And I think we used to be in the way of um, leave your problems at home, do not bring them at work. But when we're dealing with people that are suicidal in the workplace, how do we not bring them to work? When we're dealing with bullying or racism, how do we not bring them to work? And I think that's one of the issues that we have as a society, that Tough enough, suck it up, men up. Do you know men don't cry? Our men are dying because they're not allowed to cry. And I think there's an issue. I think if we can have conversations with integrity, with respect, we can address any anything. Um, in the workplace, sometimes we have this hierarchy of like, you know, if you've been bullied by someone, how do you address this? How do I cope? And I think the biggest thing I've learned in my life is that you don't cope alone. I'm a strong independent woman and it sucks to have to need some help for some things. I was at the supermarket the other day, just in between, and I couldn't reach <laughs> a can of something. And I keep waiting for a woman to walk past, but every woman they walked past was smaller than me. And I was like, oh. And then this, he was cute. This guy <laughs> walks past. <laughs> and I was like, hey, do you mind to reach that thing that I can't reach? And he was like, sure. And I was like, I'm a still a strong independent woman. And he was like, okay. <laughs> and I just felt I had to say it. Um, but what I have learned through really serious hardship in my life, and this is the thing, we don't need to compare. Oh, when I was five, that's not the point. I think we all have a story. We all have lost someone. We all have gone through um, a situation of pain, stress, danger, um, in one way or another. And the way that we respond, it's different for everyone. And that's it's more and more research coming to validate this. Um, your body will hold into trauma. So going back to not being by yourself or do not have to deal on your own, I think it's having a group, a, a network where you, I don't know if you can relate, but I don't talk to my friends about the same things. Their friends, they are their things I cannot talk about. I love them but their other friends are a bit more shallow and then I have to keep that shallowness with them. And there's other friends that I'm just like right into it. So um, when I started my life, my career as an um, entrepreneur, I, I say that because I didn't know what that even meant. Um, <laughs> I, I, start, I had a list of people to contact to advise me and they were mentors. I don't think they knew they were mentors. I would just give them a coffee, be like, let's catch up. And then I was just like, boom, drop my issues. And, and it's guided me to um, 
be able to handle things a bit better on my own. Um, I am able now, I would tell you, 15 years ago, I don't think I could have, or 10 years ago, I don't think I could have had a difficult conversation without crying. You know, I couldn't get my words out. And now I can have a really serious and tough conversation and not feel so overwhelmed and be able to hold my integrity and hold my emotions, not hold them, but um, allow my emotions. I might say to someone, this is, you know, this is something that it's clearly, I need a moment. This is something that's triggering me, um, but I need to get through them because it's like a snowball. You know, you start with a funny comment in the workplace. This, I'm, I'm going to the path of bullying because I hear a lot of that in my environment and a lot of people are go through that and don't know how to deal with it because it's almost this passive aggressive, which to me is aggressive aggressive, sometimes added to a lot of mental games. And you know, you disempower um, a situation when you address it, you know? And I had that when I used to work in an office and there was this, there was this mental games that I started to feel I was a bit paranoid and a bit, you know, I was like, am I the problem? Am I going crazy? Like, why is this? They wouldn't say it to my face, but there's this dynamic that I was enabling. So I gained some courage and I addressed things. Hey, I feel that, you know, you have a problem with me. No, oh, cool, because I, I okay, because I've noticed this and people don't know what to do. <laughs> People are like, oh crap, because they're not used to being confronted. Do you think to think about a bully or a narcissist? Um, it's not someone that's going to expect someone to confront them. And I believe this culture, I've been here since I was 18 and I'm still very young, only a few years older than 18. <laughs> um, but I've learned in this culture, I do call myself a Chiwi because even my South American friends don't they don't feel me too much as a Latina, but my adult life was here, started here. So I've been really heavily influenced by the Kiwi culture. And it's something that I've learned is that Kiwis don't like confrontation. We don't. We, we are so polite that sometimes we become a bit of a pushover. And I think there is a line when it becomes your self-respect. And I always say this, you can say anything to anyone with integrity and respect, but there are things that we accumulate and that's what creates trauma, stress, depression, anxiety. And sometimes we don't even know where it's coming from. We snap to our partners or to the children or to the lady in the supermarket. I've seen that so many times and I'm a bit of a justice, what is it called when you're like defending the poor and like really standing up for the vulnerable? I have that syndrome I always had and I get in trouble because I'm like, hey, that was not cool. And sometimes you get a big guy being like, what? you know, <laughs> and I've been really close to be hurt by, on my, for trying to do the right thing. But I want you to think about anything that's quite um, weighting you down, anything that's on your back, that's um, anxiety comes from somewhere. And I don't believe when people say, oh, I'm just anxious, you know, it's just the way I am. Now, something that's making you anxious, you are, our environment, it's one, it's, I think it's about, I don't want to give you the wrong figure, but I think it's about, it's over 50% of your well-being influences your well-being and over 50% your environment. So for those of us that were here for the earthquakes and even after the earthquakes, um, I don't know if you felt that we were kind of like, you know, like there was not much going on. Everyone was quite quiet. There was nowhere to go, you know, for teenagers, there was nowhere to hang out. Um, there was just distraction around us. That clearly influences. So it's about unpacking things. Don't, uh, don't accept that, oh, well, you know, I'm depressed. Some people are clinically depressed and they do need treatment and they do need medication and it is something there, their brain doesn't produce enough chemicals and that's a different type of depression. But depression that's just with, because of circumstances is one that should be addressed. It's one that should be, and I don't believe, I do think we all should be seeing a therapist. That's my personal opinion. I think there's so much power on speaking to someone that the way I see it is that 
he gets paid for me to dump my emotions into that room for an hour and I can just whinge and vent and rah, 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 and then he pops my bubble with two words like, have you thought about this? And I'm like, what? <laughs> you know, uh, but it's become a really important support for me. Can you let me know when I've got five left? Because, you know, I can talk. Yeah, we all know that. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's, it's been it's helped me to navigate situations that I can't navigate on my own because I don't have all of the skills and I don't need to do it alone. There's different perspectives and I've learned that it's better for me to deal with my therapist and include my friends and to all of my drama because, you know, I was becoming a bit of that. Like I was, you know, connecting with my friends just to vent and I wasn't finding any solution. And then when I, when I shift, does that make sense to anyone? Yeah. And then when I shifted to, wait, this is my one hour of the week where I can unpack the times that I turn up with a list. <laughs> so what do you want to touch today? And I'm like, well, there's a few things that happened this week. Because it's, um, your mental health or emotional health, like I like to call it, it's very important to regulate the rest of your systems. Okay? So... You've got your cardiovascular system, your respiratory system, your digestive system, the systems. And there's one in particular that can help you regulate all of the other systems. And it is your breath. It is your respiratory system. That's why meditation, mindfulness, yoga, all of that, it's so attached to the well-being and the wellness world because it can, it can literally shift your patterns and we can transform them into create new pathways so and i'm talking i'm going back to trauma in a way so if i uh, driving on a gravel road every time i hear the gravel road my body my mind knows it's okay but my body doesn't know it and you know i tense and it's just i go through the process check my breath i'm holding my breath check my shoulders they're here Check my stomach is a knot. Do you know what I mean? And then you check your thoughts and you're just going through the image of what happened 10 years ago. And that's the moment, that's the awareness. That is the moment where you step in and you're like, that was then, this is now. I'll regulate my breath because you have the ability to regulate your breath. So I, I, like, I dream of people not having to use a device to meditate, that whenever they're in a situation, they can come to their breath. And it's not about being a hippie or, you know, I'm a bit of a hippie, but I'm more than hippie, hippie chick, you know. But I think you have to be able to do this on your own. When you go to bed, also check. How do you go? And then you're like, okay, sleep. And your body's like, but um, I've got a lot of tension. I'm really anxious. Like, I'm not relaxed. So we set the environment. Like, I'd set it up for like, an, sleeping is an elusive state. Mindfulness is also that. We're setting up the stage to get yourself to sleep, brushing your teeth, putting your pajamas on, turning the light off, checking the body, a body scan. When you're in the shower, whoever really feels the shampoo in their scalp, we don't do that. We're like, got to do this. I got to pick up the kids. I'm running late. I'm, oh, I ran out of toilet paper. Did I pay the power bill? Oh, my God. Are we going on lockdown again? I'm going to invite you. <laughs> Everyone is like, oh, yeah, that's me. We're all of that, we're all part of it, but it's relearning and it's never too learn to and it's never too late to learn. It's relearning, it's retraining the body. Feel the fingers touching your skull. It's an incredible experience. And seriously, it's amazing to connect with the shampoo and the cleanliness when you're doing the dishes. I gotta do this. Sometimes I look that I notice intensity that I'm washing the dishes, and it's because my mind is elsewhere. So use those micro moments. You don't need, in reality, a mom with seven kids and a full-time job or even one kid in a life doesn't have time to sit by the tree and meditate. I wish, we all wish. But you have the moment where you're on the traffic lights to check how you're driving, to check in. You have the opportunity to pause before you respond. Is this helpful in any way? Because I can talk. Okay, so, so think about those things when you're um, in, in your environment and when you're dealing with people, uh, they're creating issues in your life, 
uh, seek help. You know, you don't have to come up with the answers on your own. And mainly if you're in, exposed in a situation, it's quite important to have someone that can support you. That's why the support person exists because we all need to support it on each other. We all need to lean on each other. Um, that is me. I don't think I have, I have a lot more to say, but I just hope you come to yoga and practice with me. <laughs> Thank you so much.